I've been having a lot of fun with my Hudson Spyhawk recently, and seeing as the weather has taken a turn for the worst, I thought I'd compile some of it together. Now this is my first flight that I did with the wide angle lens. I went ahead and bought the entire module. You can just buy the lens on, it, on its own, but it can be quite tricky, as the standard lens I think is glued in or it's secured uh, very tight. I didn't really fancy screwing the lens out and trying to get the new lens to focus, so I bought the entire module. Now the module was £19, which is half the price of the Mobius, but it was the only solution that I could find really that suited me, and I can just switch the lenses in. And as you can see, I'm getting really nice footage. Now, there's nothing really special about this video, it was a very calm day, and the video is very smooth. There is just some things to take note of with these cameras though, and I think this goes for all of these action cameras really. And that is, you really have to pick your time when to fly your plane, and that is because of the wide dynamic range on these cameras. When the sun is really low in the sky, then the amount of light that is exposed to the camera is very high and the ground tends to be very dark. So I found that the best time for flying with these cameras is in the middle of the day when the sun is up high, then you get an even light all around. Or when it's cloudy like this, uh, this was taken uh, around dusk time and I find that's the best time for flying especially where I live because the uh, wind calms down at dusk in the daytime it's usually too blowy to be able to get smooth video this is quite uh, a light aircraft and it gets blown around a lot so uh, as you can see here actually what's happening is that's the gyro, a gust of wind knocks the wingtip to one side and the gyro uh, stabilizes it. Now another thing that I've noticed with this video is I think this is the highest that I've ever gotten with this plane, not at this point but actually you see that, that um, hill in the background there that is about 15 miles away there so uh, we we can see quite far ahead but as it gets higher up actually in this section of the sky here a uh, mountain becomes clear which I've looked on the map and it's around about 43 miles away so getting some really good views from this cheap setup here To give you an idea of how high this is, um, if you look at the size of the cars that you can see and imagine that the Spyhawk's wing is probably about half the length of the back of a car, then you can see how small this aircraft is in the sky and at this point I'm flying the aircraft pretty much line of sight and then just checking the screen every now and then. You can't really FPV at this height um, not for a great length of time without a spotter because you don't know how far away you are that the angle is so wide on the camera that you could be a few hundred meters each way and still get a similar sort of view out of the camera I actually went on Google Earth and took some similar shots, got got the camera to the same position. It wasn't quite the same because we've got the wide angle here and actually the Mobius camera has uh, quite a wide angle lens for the standard, certainly wider than Google Earth, but um, I, I could sort of get the images matched up and I was getting around about 400 to f uh, 500 meters 
um, with these shots. So, you know, that's like 1,500 feet, maybe more. So, you know, I'm happy with the height. Really, if you get up any higher than this, you start to lose detail. I mean, even here now, um, some of the houses below, we're losing some details. What I would recommend, though, is to use the wide-angle lens to see things that are more sort of directly below you, like the, the houses and the streets there. You can see, if you've got the standard lens, you can't see things that are close. You can only see things in the distance, so that's how you can use those two setups. I think I start getting afraid of how high up I am here and uh, come down lower soon. Yeah, another thing that I notice with the wide angle lens as well is that it does let more light into the camera. So when you are flying at dusk or where the sun is low in the horizon, then the uh, the darkened effects that you get on the ground is seems to be a lot more with the wide angle lens than it is with the standard lens. All of these adjustments that are happening, it's all the gyro. However, if I turn the stabilization off, the picture is too jerky, so the gyro does do a good job. Obviously, this is an all-in-one system, so I don't think that I can mess with the setup of the gyro. But in general, it does a pretty good job. I think in this video as well, it's the only video where I've gone almost directly over the road and you can see the comparison in speed with the cars there, although the cars are going 70 miles an hour on on that road. Um, this is a very slow flying aircraft really. Actually if you look at the bottom there is a dog just running towards me. It's a huge dog and I think that's when I decided to start uh, flying a little bit lower. I thought it was going to jump up at me but luckily he didn't. Yeah, I try not to fly over the road if I can. It actually gets quite a lot of draft off that road. The, the get, I get quite a lot of turbulence flying at sort of the tree height, and I think it comes off the cars off this road. As always with flying this aircraft, it is attracted someone someone always comes up and chats to me and I ask questions about it a lot of people can't believe that there is a high definition camera okay so this is another day where the weather had gotten worse and I decided that uh, I was going to try some aerobatics because I hadn't really seen it done I think there's a people doing a couple of people doing loops but it's certainly not done with the Mobius so I thought I'd try and do a roll there. Stability is turned off completely here. Now, it was an incredibly windy day anyways. Uh, I really want to try this, actually, when it's a calm day. Um, I didn't really want to get up high because it was so windy. So I thought I'll take the opportunity to try out some aerobatics. I do a lot of 3D aerobatics with my other aeroplane. I fly a uh, shock fly in Icarus, a pit special. This flies a little bit different than that, but as you can see though, it does do some aerobatics. You just have to have the stability off, and the, the aircraft is incredibly twitchy with the stability off. I think it's due to the size of the aircraft and the amount of power that it's got, but actually I found that once I balanced it up, a little better using the battery that I could turn the stability off and the aircraft would still fly pretty straight and here it's doing rolls they're very very slow rolls and you have to put quite a lot of down pressure in when inverted it was too windy to see if it would fly inverted but I think it would for a small amount of time so I think I'm gonna try that um, in a future video perhaps 
Right, I was getting very close to these trees here. The wind was blowing the plane directly into the trees. So I managed to get quite a low loop there. Right? It was getting lower as I got more confident with it. This one I thought was interesting. This is a, a bird that I started flying behind. Uh, I wasn't quick enough to catch up with him, but I, I'd love to get more shots of flying behind bird. This was um, a shot that I was very pleased of. I think just because I got very low and very fast. More people there watching as well. This is a different day when it was the weather had gone smoother. And this one, I think, is an accidental touch and go that I did. Um, the kids were asking me how low I could get, and I touched the ground. 